What's going on everybody? So a couple days ago I posted the artwork I made of my girlfriend Kate as a Funko Pop and uh, I got a lot of comments asking for a tutorial for that. Interestingly, I also got a number of comments asking if this was by any chance Katerino, the uh, the streamer. And uh, no, that's that's not the case. Uh, that's a different Katerino. So I just wanted to clear the air of that real quick and uh, I, let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you design a 3D anything is go ahead and get yourself some concept art. Fortunately, Funko themselves have a designer feature where you can generate a reference image for yourself with the correct proportions and all that. So I figured we'd get started with that. Obviously not everything will remain the same and things will get lost in translation, but we can do our best. So you may have noticed here that this is not Kate, my girlfriend. This is me. I wanted to make us both. And since I was going to do that anyways, I might as well make a video on it, right? You're going to go through each of these categories for yourself and kind of choose what you look like, I guess. It's a lot like creating a me on the Wii, except more soulless eyes. All right, I figured that'll do it. Don't give yourself a background, by the way. That'll make it a bit more difficult. And that does it for the concept art. Now that we've got that image, go ahead and click Save Your Pop. Give it a name, press Save, and then head down to that Pop Yourself menu and click Download. Save it to whatever location you want. And there you have it. Now we're going to get into Blender and start making this thing. The very first thing I'm going to do is drag the image straight into Blender. There we go. And then press Alt-R and Alt-G to reset all the coordinates. That at least is what I do. Now you're going to want to rotate this so that you have a good angle looking at it because the very first thing that we need to do is make the proportions. So what I've done here is I've added a cube and subdivided it multiple times. It turns out this works better as a sphere for me than pretty much any other type of sphere. Now something else I did for this is deleted most of the vertices and then added a mirror modifier on the Y and X axes so that if I need to change the proportions of one side to fit the hair or something like that, it'll work on all the corners. Next, it's time to add the eyes. I'm just gonna do another cube with another subdivision surface, and uh, we're gonna go into edit mode and scale that thing. Once it looks nice and smooth, go back in the wireframe and scale it right on top of the reference image. You're gonna err on the side of a little bigger just because we're gonna have to rotate this. Speaking of that, go ahead into object mode and rotate the eyeball so that it sits flush along the surface. And once you've done one, you've done both of them because you can simply add a mirror modifier, choose the head as the mirror object, and there you go. If that doesn't match perfectly, then uh, you're gonna have to start over. I'm kidding, there's actually nothing that matters less. Now let's talk about the nose. Honestly, it's fine if it's just a cube. I'm just gonna grab some vertices and start putting them vaguely where it should go. But uh, I'm literally just kind of performing surgery on these vertices here. Next up, you're gonna wanna fill the faces of the rest of the nose. And uh, immediately, this uh, does not work in the slightest, but uh, we're just gonna scale it down a bit and kind of act like it does. So here's a trick. If you scale on any given axis by zero, it will flatten everything out on that axis completely. It's a really useful trick that I, I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere else. But actually, I think I am gonna subdivide that. Once you've found a shape you're happy with, it's time to move on. There's no reason, It's re it really is time to move on. Oh, by the way, while I was doing this, I had the bright idea that I could take the beard off real quick so that I could download it and be able to actually see what I was doing with the clothes. With the clothes, for me, it's literally the same story as the head. Cut it in half, add a mirror modifier, call it good. You've just got to be thoughtful about where you're placing the edge loops so that you can create the rest of the geometry relatively simply. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. Anytime you see a little too much curvature, keep in mind, if there's a limb going off either of those ways, it's going to eliminate that curvature pretty quick, so there's no need to worry about it, especially when you're just creating the basic form. Now, in this scenario, you might actually want to sculpt this. However, in my case, we're running into the unique problem where I don't want to. And I think this way actually works very well for what it's worth. Now, once you get down to the feet, it's going to become ridiculous, especially when you're just starting out. But I think it's fine if you tilt them forwards at first so that we can get the form all right. And then after that, we can go crazy with making it look perfect. So I'm just going to actually inset a little bit to create a neck. And this neck could literally look like anything. And it doesn't matter because you probably won't see it. So now we've run into the problem where I don't want to create two arms. I just want to create one. So what I'm going to do is delete half of the model that we just created. And then go ahead and add a mirror modifier. So I'm just going to be extruding right from that shoulder area. And it's going to work pretty well. If you ever run into something where the proportions just do not look right from the side view, you can always just grab the edge loop 
and then scale that in a little bit. And if you do want to tighten up these areas, you can always just add another supporting loop and that should do you just fine. Now we come to the hands and that might be one of the more difficult parts. I decided I would make them independently and then bring them back over. Three edge loops down the center, two down the other side, let's go. I'm gonna slap a subdivision surface on here and I'm going to press Alt-E, extrude individual faces for the fingers and then extrude the thumb out. Now, I'm not even going to pretend that this isn't going to need some serious adjustment, but as it turns out, this will work just fine as a base mesh for our hand. So it turns out, I decided I would do the pants a little bit differently than I had originally planned, and that is to make them separately. That, that's what I did in the other model, and it did make it a bit easier. Thankfully, these are pretty much one of the easiest parts of the model, so it's really of no consequence. I'm gonna go ahead and move this all over to the head so we can start <laughs> so we can start adjusting it. First things first, let's start scaling. This is getting a bit out of hand here. And don't worry, we'll fix the proportions later. But it is about time that we fix these hands. All right, so I just looked back and I discovered that the way that I was handling these hands was not correct in the slightest bit. And I just wanted to clear something up for you real quick. What I was attempting to do was select all the top faces, delete them, select this top edge loop, go into search, and type to sphere. And there's an excellent feature in there that just allows you to turn whatever it is into a circular shape. This allows it to get much smoother, much quicker. But anyways, I suggested that you put loop cuts on each finger, adjust to the size of each finger using proportional editing, and then once you're ready, go ahead and edit the forms so that it doesn't look so weird in the back. Basically, this loop right here will fit perfectly with the sleeve and so let's say this is the sleeve. You can kind of just put the sleeve over it and it will work perfectly for these purposes. If you do want to rotate your shoes or your legs, a good way to do that, as I've found, is to select the bottom of the soles and then hit that rotate button, crank up the proportional editing and let Blender do its thing. And after you're happy with the way that you've depicted yourself, then it's time to move on to the hair and accessories. So I've heard of a lot of confusion as to how to make good hair. So I thought I'd give you the quickest rundown possible for those of my audience that are hardcore blender users. Now, something that you need to know is that I ended up using two different hair techniques for each of these Funko Pops. The first one I used a Yan Sculpts technique, just search up his tutorial on sculpting hair. And the second one I kind of just threw together. Basically, I took a cube, I deleted two of the faces. Now I'm left with this. So I go in and add a subdivision surface modifier, add a solidify modifier, extrude it out a little bit, and then scale out on the Y in edit mode. Now I positioned this directly above the head of the Funko Pop and made some adjustments as necessary. But that's not where the real magic happens. This is actually just a base mesh for sculpting. Now this is more time consuming maybe than the Yan sculpts. And you'll see what I do with this in the next segment. Now this is gonna be a lot more time consuming than the alternative route. And it does involve a little bit more artistic ability, but it also affords you the most options. Retopology is after all one of the more important 3D skills to learn, especially if you plan to use it in a professional setting. But it looks like we're coming to a close with the sculpting here, so I think it's about time we move on. I think we're forgetting some... I think I forgot to add eyebrows. Yeah, let's add eyebrows. That, that makes it a lot better. So all I'm going to do for these eyebrows is just add in a plane, rotate it, scale it down to size and extrude. That's really all that needs to happen. And then of course we rotate it so that it kind of fits onto the mesh. Yeah, so we gotta make those headphones. I'm just gonna bring this right over to the side for us to see. So it looks like the headphones are just a bunch of cylinders. The only reason I'll bring the reference back in is to kind of check and see if it's looking all right. And in the same object, I'm going to add a cube. I'm pretty happy with this headphone shape. I think that looks just fine. But you'll notice that there's some hair going through in some weird spots. As it turns out, the elastic deform brush actually works even better than the flattened brush in this situation. It affects everything around it, so it's more likely to create some believable results. Also, go watch Jan Sculpts, because if you're into digital sculpting, that guy is here looking for in Blender. Definitely not me. And well, with that, I think that does it for the modeling. Now it's just time to get into the shading. So I'm just going to pull this off to the side so that we can kind of reference it. I'm going to add a plane, scale it up the usual. I'm going to grab two of the walls and press extrude to bring them up. And then I'm going to grab all those edges and throw some uh, bevels on them. I'm going to add a shade smooth. This is probably my favorite type of background to use for 3D stuff. Now it's just about creating some cool materials. So the first one I made is a skin material. All I did was press the E key over the base color and create a skin color based on the reference. 
add some subsurface scattering on it, make the subsurface color the same as the base color. Incre incredible, I know. Now it's gonna look a little bit weird in Eevee, but uh, once you switch over to Cycles, it'll look even more weird until you render it. Next up, let's make a black material that's just gonna be deep black with subsurface. We're gonna make the subsurface color really kind of gray. Doesn't need to be black necessarily, because if it is, it gets a little too satanic. And now we get to the real stuff, the hair. And uh, I could just pick a color, or I could just steal it from the reference. And as you can see, once the subsurface is up, the base color really doesn't have a lot to do with it. Now, I'm also going to use the hair material on the eyebrows. And, uh, well, might I say, this is some fine-looking topology. For the joggers, I'm going to make a white material. And uh, I'll go paint on the details in a little bit here. But I figured we might as well set up a nice little shot, so I'm going to hide pretty much everything. We're going to need a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. The key light being the primary light, usually the brightest, and usually casting some substantial shadows. The fill light actually compensates for those harsh shadows that are caused by the key light. And then the backlight, as far as I'm concerned, is used to distinguish the subject from the background. And at the end of the day, I can't make it perfect. It still feels like something's missing, and they're not perfect models, but I'm really proud of what came out of it. But the goal was achieved. I made a Funko of myself and my girlfriend. If you want me to actually physically make these and then maybe make it a gift or something, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have some sort of logistical solution to that, that would be great. But with that, I hope you have an excellent day. I hope you're staying safe. These two look adorable. It's almost like they were made for each other.